Hello, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network, and I have another very cool Devar Torah about Rosh Hashanah to share with you. Here we go. If a person opens up the Talmud Tractate Rosh Hashanah, page 27b, you find the following discussion in the Talmud. Here's the discussion. What would happen when it comes time to blow the shofar? You know, tekia, right? Tekia, you want to blow the shofar. What happens if you have a really funky shofar arrangement, okay? You have a shofar, a sh and then you take a smaller shofar and you kind of jam it in. You have a shofar inside of a shofar. Now, it sounds like a driver, a chauffeur, a chauffeur. You have a chauffeur, a chauffeur, chauffeur. But you know what I'm talking about, a chauffeur inside of a chauffeur, okay? Now, you have a big one inside of a small one. Why would you do this? I don't know, but the Talmud discusses a lot of cases. What will be the halacha if, okay? So what happens? You have a big one inside of a, a with a small one inside of it, and then the person comes and he blows to Kiyagadola. Okay, fine. So far, so good. I'm going to spare you my fake uh, Rosh Hashanah chauffeur blows for the little clip. Okay. So what's the question? The question the Talmud's asking is, is it going to work or is it not? Are you yaitze? Do you fulfill the mitzvah of, of hearing the shofar? If you listen to a shofar that's inside of a shofar, does it work or does it not? So here are the words that the Talmud says in response. The Talmud says this, if you hear the inner voice, the inner koil, the inner voice, meaning the inner shofar, you're, you're, you fulfill your obligation, you fulfill the mitzvah. But if what the person is hearing, I guess is kind of the echo of the outer one, if you hear the outer voice, Talmud says, no, no, you're not fulfilling the mitzvah. Inner voice, yes, outer voice, no. Okay, so Ad Khan up to here, that's the basic halacha. So if anybody will ever ask you, big shofar, little shofar, jammed in, you blow it, the answer is, depends on what the person is hearing. If you're hearing the inner one, you fulfill. The outer one, you not fulfill. Okay, this is great, but why am I taking up your time in video and internet land to share with you that piece of information? Is it just to share with you the halacha, the basic law, to even a little bit more, okay? So the Bali Musser, the ethical commentary, say something so insightful here, which I think is a genius idea, and it answers this common question. What am I supposed to be doing on Rosh Hashanah? What am I supposed to feel? How do I know 48 plus hours later that I did it right? I mean, is there a litmus test? What am I supposed to do? How do I know if I fulfilled what I was supposed to do on Rosh Hashanah or not? Is there a basic yes or no test? Okay. So here is what the Balei Musser, the ethical commentary, say on this, which is gorgeous. They say like this, you know, there's all kinds of koilas, all kinds of voices that are constantly clamoring for our attention. There's outer voices, like the Mishnah was speaking about. There's an outer voice. In Yiddish, we call it the gas, which means the street out there. Look good. Come like here do like this, life is just about pushing as many pleasure buttons as you can, have fun, money's the most important thing, you know, just whatever you do today doesn't matter and certainly won't matter tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. That's the outer voice. And we also know in life, and certainly as Yidin, as Jews, we have an inner coil, an inner voice. That's the voice of our neshama, our soul, which is a spark and piece of Hashem inside of us that's always talking to us, trying to get our attention. Hey, look at me. Remember, you're a Jew. God gave you the Torah. Your soul was at Mount Sinai. You're not going to live forever. Make the most of today. Be a, be a spiritual being in a physical body. Don't forget I exist. We have an inner coil and an outer coil. An inner voice and an outer voice. So this is what they say. It's gorgeous. Mwah. They say like this. They say, the Kamar Shoshana, you want to know you did what you're supposed to do? Here's what you have to do. If you heard on Rosh Hashanah the inner voice... Yatsa, you fulfilled. You did what you were supposed to do. But if all on Rosh Hashanah, you sat there, you did your apples, you dipped them in the honey, you, you, did, you ate your pomegranate seeds, okay? You know, you heard you even got some Avinu Malkanus in. But you know what? At the end of the day, your whole time you're thinking about work and this and blah, 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 blah. Your heads and the outside, if all you heard was the outer voice, lo yatsa, you didn't fulfill what you were supposed to do. Make sure no matter what happens on Rosh Hashanah, you have quiet time for yourself. It could be when you're in synagogue and shul. It could be when you're at home. It could be learning. It could be with your family. Make sure you're basically attuned to hearing what your neshama is telling you. Be a good Jew. Keep the Torah. Come back. Accept Hashem to be your melech, the king. And there's a commander in chief and capital C's and everything else that we have to listen to him and follow his instructions. Because if you hear the inner voice, you fulfilled what you were supposed to on Rosh Hashanah. If all you heard was the outer voice, basically, oh, I can't wait to turn on my phone again and everything else, 
you missed the point of the holiday. Okay, anyway, that's the Bali Musar on the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah on 27b. This is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman, the Jewish Executive Learning Network. Hope you enjoyed today's clip, and we will see you the next time. Thank you.